Welcome back to Movie Recap. Today I'm gonna show you a 2019 war action film called, Mosul. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The movie begins during the Battle of Mosul, wherein the ISIS and Iraqis are fighting. ISIS is known as, Daesh, considering them as part of the world, and continues running after years of occupation during which they raped, tortured, and murdered on a medieval scale. Since Iraq is the second largest city where wars often occur, the Nineveh SWAT team is the only unit that attempts to fight against Daesh without rest or retreat. Nineveh is an elite police unit made up of men from the city. Because of their impressive actions and strategic plans, the Nineveh SWAT has killed many Daesh fighters, yet they still don't receive Toba, an offer they'd get from the Daesh. Technically, Toba is a chance for capturing Iraqi security forces to repent and switch sides. However, SWAT team also has a downfall because some of its members are summarily executed. Because of that, the SWAT team's now conducting their final mission, attempting to finish it even before the Daesh vanishes forever. Later, three Mosuli policemen hide inside the cafe building as they arrest ISIS drug smugglers, trying to hold the suspects while defending themselves against ISIS outside. However, ISIS suddenly overruns the Mosul police officers after seeing them stopping to shoot. While avoiding the gunshots, one of the police officers aggressively holds the head of an ISIS smuggler, ordering him to stop talking to his friends or else he'll blow his head off. As the three Mosuli policemen almost get killed, Kawa, a 21-year-old Kurd who's recently enlisted as a police officer, immediately takes action to throw back the grenade that ISIS threw toward them. However, the remaining two Mosul police officers suddenly run out of ammo, so they hide on the table instead. Unfortunately, Kawa's uncle dies during the gunfight inside the cafe building. Meanwhile, the Nineveh SWAT team suddenly finds that there are stranded police officers inside the cafe building, so they decide to save them despite their ongoing mission. Aside from rescuing Kawa and the other officer, Jamil, the SWAT also executes the drug smugglers. On the other hand, Major Jassim walks inside, and asks Kawa what they are doing on the city's side, so Kawa answers, saying that they're arresting the drug smugglers in the cafe building. Afterward, Kawa explains that the Daesh is starting to break and run again when suddenly Jamil intervenes, saying that the Daesh are crossing over to their side to trade drugs for weapons and ammo. However, Jassim seems fascinated by Kawa's courageousness to fight against the Daesh. So, Jassim offers Kawa to join them because he's eligible to become part of the SWAT, reasoning out that a person like him who lost his uncle to ISIS can be a member of Nineveh. Technically, the Nineveh SWAT team is a made-up team of native men of Mosul who lost their family members, too and the team is led by none other than Jassim, the commander major. Though Kawa refuses to join at first, Jamil assures Kawa that he'll get his uncle's corpse for burial. So, Kawa immediately follows the SWAT team member to change his uniform into the Ninve SWAT uniform. On the other hand, Jassim warns Jamil not to arrest people in that place anymore because it would be useless, so he better get back to the other side immediately before he gets killed by ISIS. Jassim then orders Jamil to inform his superiors that Kawa's with them, ignoring what Jamil says about them being dead already. Afterward, the SWAT team continues their mission as Jassim orders Walid and Kamal, to keep Kawa between them. So, Walid approaches Kawa, telling him to watch them so that he'll learn quickly. However, Kawa eventually asks Walid about their mission objective, but Walid chooses to ignore Kawa's question by offering him a cigarette. Afterward, they go inside an abandoned building when suddenly Jassim calls Kawa to stop coming with them inside, and wait outside while he's covering them. Eventually, Jassim, and Kawa, share a conversation while patrolling outside. Afterward, they successfully enter the abandoned building, and Jassim orders his men to rest for a while first as they'll secure the second floor afterward. Before continuing their mission, Jassim commands will lead to eat something while they're away because the third Humvee won't be back for a bit. Luckily, the SWAT team finds a safe room to relax, so they all decide to enter together, and watch the soap opera on the television. Once again, Kawa gets ignored by a SWAT member after asking him about the purpose of their mission. Then, on the other hand, Jassim gives Walid some money to get some rest and something to eat. However, Kawa and Jassim notice Kawa's previous partner, Jamil, returning with his vehicle, and signaling to an ISIS car bomber about their location. Because of that, Jassim immediately shouts, ordering his men to get down as the car bomb explodes. Unfortunately, Tomahawk, one of the SWAT members, suddenly dies from the bomb blast. Frustrated, Jassim almost attacks Kawa, blaming him for killing his soldier instead of Jamil. Afterward, Jassim heatedly gives Tomahawk's axe to Kawa, but Kawa refuses to accept it. But when Jassim intensely looks at Kawa's eyes, he immediately tells Jassim that he's not a traitor and accepts Tomahawk's axe. Jassim then orders his men to carry their brother's body, and put it on their Humvee, 
planning to get Tomahawk's proper burial of his corpse. Afterward, the Nineveh SWAT team prays for Tomahawk's soul. A while later, Kamal shares his strategic plan about getting the shortest route, which is to stay on the side of the city, head north, then get attacked 50 times before they even make it a mile. Kamal then gives them another option, which is trying to bribe their way to the safe side of the city through a checkpoint. So, Jassim decides and chooses to do the checkpoint despite telling Kamal that both of his plans are good. Afterward, Jassim tells Kawa to come with them as he'll be the lead vehicle. However, Jassim suddenly receives news from the enemy on the radio, talking about the soldiers of ISIS who are still spreading out everywhere, so they must remain and expand even before they cut the SWAT team's heads off. Worried about the innocent people getting killed, Jassim immediately stops the vehicle as he attempts to save the children walking on the street. However, his men tell Jason to move already, but Jassim still waits for the child to go with them. Fortunately, the child comes with them, leaving his older brother behind. While upon the checkpoint, Jassim orders his men to stop the vehicle, move out Tomahawk's corpse outside, and give them a proper burial with the dead people in the tent. However, while Kawa is helping to carry Tomahawk's body, Huka accuses Kawa of being a traitor's partner. On the other hand, Jassim talks with a family man, favoring him to care for the child because he has already lost his parents. Though the man refuses to accept Jassim's offer of money, his sister immediately takes it, and tells Jassim that they will take the child. Eventually, Kawa gets frustrated as no one dares to answer his questions, so Huka finally reveals their objective. However, the SWAT team and the surrounding civilians come under fire from ISIS shooters while crossing into the ISIS-held part of Mosul. Little do they know, the ISIS shooters are shooting from a rooftop, not because of the leaving civilians, but because of the SWAT team. Trying to save the citizens, Jassim suddenly sees the sniper from the rooftop, so he orders Huka to shoot at 1 o'clock when suddenly the sniper gets him killed first. Afterward, Jassim calls Walid and Kawa, to help him clear the rooftop by killing the two snipers. Fortunately, they successfully clear out the road, and plan their next course of action. Afterward, Jassim orders Walid to drive the Humvees to the closest point, then continue on foot. Meanwhile, the remaining SWAT team members join Jassim, Walid, and Kawa on the rooftop. Afterward, Jassim orders Amir to take up a sniper position, while Razak, Akram, and Yunus will go with Walid to walk them through how they get on the road. Suddenly, Walid calls Jassim, telling him that one of the ISIS bases is between the pink building and the parking lot on the left. However, they eventually see an explosive-laden drone in the sky while planning their following action. Little do they know, the drone targets one of the ISIS men's Humvees, but it accidentally hits their Humvees. Technically, the SWAT team witnesses how the drone explodes. Afterward, Jassim sees another explosive-laden drone shot down by an Iranian Special Forces operative colonel, Isfahani. Isfahani is the commander of the popular mobilization forces in Mosul. Eventually, Jassim sees Isfahani on the other side of the rooftop, asking him why he uses an American rifle to fire NATO ammo. So, Isfahani answers, saying they still have more boxes of ammo. Desperate to have more ammo to load their guns, Jassim accepts Isfahani's offer of AK-47 ammo to his team in exchange for cigarette cartons. Technically, nicotine is more critical to Isfahani as he quickly gets ammo packs in the battle. Afterward, the SWAT men meet with the PMF in front of their building. However, Jassim has left no choice, but to enter the building alone and follows Isfahani's order. Then, before entering, Jassim orders his men to take care of themselves as he won't be taking long inside. Later, Jassim finally arrives and barters with Isfahani, then says that he always keeps his distance from their particular group despite getting close to many of them. However, Isfahani suddenly makes a deal to accept Jassim's offer, in which Jassim will look at their prisoners to see if he can identify any. Technically, Jassim is offering Isfahani one carton per head. Eventually, Jassim calls Kawa down as he realizes that one of the PMF's prisoners is Kawa's partner, Jamil. Then, after Kawa confirms that it's Jamil, Jassim favors Isfahani to take him because he gave the SWAT team to Daesh. At the same time, Jassim's making a deal with Isfahani. Jamil continues explaining to Kawa that the ISIS group took him, and threatened him that they'd assassinate his grandson if he refused to show the SWAT team's location. Because of Jamil, the tension between the SWAT team and PMF eventually rises as Jassim and Isfahani argue about what they will do with Jamil. Unfortunately, Isfahani refuses to agree with Jassim regarding them taking Jamil, while Kawa, on the other hand, is profoundly thinking about why Jamil put them in danger. Suddenly, Kawa uses the axe and attacks Jamil, hitting his head and getting him killed. Because of that, the tension between Jassim and Isfahani de-escalates, leaving them shocked at what he did to Jamil. Fortunately, Isfahani agrees with Jassim's offer to have one carton of cigarettes per head. 
Afterward, the SWAT men take the ammo packs when suddenly Walid exchanges hookah's hookah for an RPG with a single rocket. Confused, Jassim asks why Walid does it, so Walid says that they need more than bullets to wipe out the base of ISIS. Technically, Walid realizes that they can't leave without a single rocket as their weapon because it's an excellent defense to destroy the ISIS camp they've seen earlier from the rooftop. Leaving him no choice, Jassim allows Walid to use it and leaves Isfahani's building. Upon getting into the vehicle, Jassim explains to Kawa that his SWAT team can't go back for ammo, call in artillery strikes, or even sleep on mattresses on the safe side of the city because they have gone against their superior's new command and the police. Eventually, Jassim begins to answer Kaya's repeated questions about their mission when suddenly Kawa interrupts him, and says he's no longer interested in knowing it anymore. Technically, Kawa clarifies to Jassim that he will only get interested to know something if he commands something. Afterward, the SWAT team continues doing their mission when suddenly they stop driving after reaching the roadblock. Eventually, the SWAT team has left no choice, but to fight outside their Humvees, in which Yunus suddenly gets killed by friendly fire. Shocked, Walid sluggishly walks toward Yunus when suddenly he hears Kawa shouting for help as he gets injured by a friendly fire grenade inside their Humvee. Unfortunately, Kawa gets facially disfigured and covered with a balaclava, so Amir apologizes as he admits that he's the one who threw the grenade on the road to attack the enemies. After treating Kawa, Jassim orders his men to proceed by foot and enter a building. However, Razak suddenly gets killed in close quarter combat, and Shinan endures a stab wound from the enemies. Unfortunately, it's a surprise attack that they fail to defend themselves. Because of that, the remaining SWAT team aggressively kills all the ISIS men and leaves them no choice, but to proceed to attack the ISIS camp. Upon walking, Walid leads the way when Kamal suddenly sees Shinan's blood pouring down on the ground. So, Kamal calls the others to inform them that Shinan is bleeding. Afterward, Kamal immediately covers Shinan's injury with a cloth to stop it from bleeding. Afterward, Jassim orders his men to hold on to the road while he and Walid will check the perimeter from the rooftop. Eventually, Walid uses the single rocket to destroy the ISIS camp and signal Jassim to get in for an attack. As they're securing the ISIS camp, Akram suddenly dies after getting shot by an ISIS member. Afterward, Jassim orders his men with their particular task to finally take the camp. Fortunately, the SWAT team successfully takes most of the ISIS members, so Jassim immediately commands his team to reload and hydrate until they finish them off. On the other hand, Kamal takes care of an injured Shinan by giving him pills for his wound. The movie ends with Jassim getting killed by an ISIS booby trap after cleaning trash from any area. Because of his habit, Jassim put himself in danger, and left the team alone. Shocked, the SWAT team mourns Jassim's death as they suffer excessive morale loss with the death of their commander. However, Kawa eventually stands up and talks, reminding the team to get up, and finish their mission despite not having Jassim to lead. Leaving them no choice, Kamal agrees and thoroughly convinces the rest of their team to prepare their weapons for their last mission. Walid then leads the SWAT team, and moves into an apartment complex, wherein he uses a spare key he had hidden under his shoe. Luckily, Walid successfully opens the apartment door, and aggressively kills the ISIS member who took his wife, Hayat, and their daughter, Dunya, for forced marriage. Crying, Walid eventually reunites with his family while the SWAT team watches them from behind. Because of that, Kawa finally understands the SWAT's objective upon doing their mission. Technically, Kawa learns that Jassim's idea was to carry out the missions to liberate the family members after getting captured by ISIS. Afterward, Kawa voluntarily joins another mission to save Amir's son, who's just close to their location. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this to help the channel out. Have a nice day.